All right, let's go. Get away from me. All right, get your orbs. Get your orbs here. All right, I killed him with the turret. Oh my god. Yo, did he just- I'm sure you perceptive bunch can tell what's going on, but never did I think that this useless- this exotic would find its way into a meta viable strategy for winning Iron Banner Fortress. If you pay attention to the bottom left of the screen, you can see that Totsugeki generated one orb of power probably 20 times. And so if my teammates pop a super and then collect those orbs, they immediately have another super. This is what it looks like from my team's perspective under like not even ideal circumstances. I shoot a tether and get three quarters of it back, and I get the rest of it from my teammates cycling bubbles on the point, as is tradition in Iron Banner Fortress, Bungie please fix. So while the strategy seems game breaking, it does have a pretty simple counter, and I would call this strategy an alternate win condition, akin to let's say the Yu-Gi-Oh card game when you drop Exodia on somebody. While the Yu-Gi-Oh anime made Exodia seem like this ultra overpowered card, in reality in the competitive card game, people don't really play it because of all the hoops you have to jump through to get it on the field and claim victory. Not to mention, if your opponent knows you're trying to play an Exodia deck, they'll just use a card that prevents you from playing spells or drawing other cards. Or in the case of Destiny 2, they'll just throw a suppressor grenade down mid, which they're already going to run because they're probably already on a bubble titan. But even despite how simple it is to counter an Exodia deck, or in this case a Blight Ranger, players are still drawn to the idea of an alternate win condition, and it's exciting to pull off. Let me show you what hoops you have to jump through, and always pay attention to the background footage, and look at my teammates cycling back to back supers. That is how powerful this can be. Okay, now going over the perks, starting at the top with the exotic helmet Blight Ranger. If you block and reflect projectiles, they do like four times damage, and guarding doesn't consume super energy, but it also makes giant orbs. I'm charging the super with double dynamo and hands on. So if I dodge near an opponent, it gives me extra super energy. The distribution perk on my class item also adds to this. The dodge I'm using is Gambler's Dodge since I have to play Arc Strider, and I'm using that Gambler's Dodge to send out a wave of lightning on the floor, which does give me extra super energy if it lands a kill. I'm using the Threat Detector perk to know when my opponents are near me, so that way I know when to dodge to get the super energy or my melee back in a pinch. I have close to 10 intellect, it's going to be 9 or 10 at times on this build, and I will constantly switch my mods to accommodate a lightweight weapon. I tried bad juju as a meme, but ultimately I found that conditional finality is the best pick, and I find the best weapon pairing to be something that has kill chaining potential that turns your hand cannon into say, two taps. But I also found that a waveframe launcher was extremely effective for baiting out multi-kills with the melee, which contributes to you getting the first super. Okay, now I'm going to do a post-commentary play-by-play to show you how to build the super before the turrets drop in mid. So first of all, you need to gauge your team and see if they go to the B flag or not. If not, you should probably cap the A flag with them since it does give you super energy. Now you see me fishing for threat detector dodges and getting them off as well as some multi-kills involving the wave frame and grenade or melee combo. To get your super early on an arc strider, you pretty much have to be involved in every gunfight possible and ripping as many dynamo dodges as you possibly can. I was fortunate this match to be able to pull power ammo, which to me is a lot of free kills because remote detonation. You can still get this one from dares I think. Then I just have one more bad juju duel to win, and sure enough, there it is, the super I worked so hard for. Now all that's left to do is just hold the block button near the turrets and make giant orbs, and then your teammates can get multiple supers. So yeah, this is a pretty powerful fall!